Ten years ago, I started to design production boats for the design consultancy Ladida Design. As part of my work, I like to challenge preconceived ideas and methods in the way that we design and build boats. I want to share um, our concept of the positive impact boat uh, today. Um, so uh, I'll first present some hard facts about the environmental impact of uh, our creations. Then I'd like to share some available methodologies to create more sustainable designs. But as a positive impact is better still than uh, merely a good one, uh, we'll take a look at some boat designs with a truly positive impact. Oh. It does go ahead. Ooh, okay. Faster. <laughs> okay. I cheat. <laughs> yes, now I did cheat. <laughs> I overruled this. Okay. Boats are the oldest form of um, transportation. They used to be uh, designed in a cradle to cradle way. At the end of their useful life, they'd rot away and become nutrients. Um, out of these grew more uh, raw materials. Um, Mm, I'll cheat. Well, you cheat, you can't cheat again. Okay. Um, so when boats come uh, to their natural end of life and lay forlorn in harbors and along the coastlines, they tend to provide at best a charming photo opportunity. At worst, they become an environmental hazard and a sad looking sight. When boats are abandoned, they ought to be disposed of in scrapyards, but are all too often sunk uh, in the open sea. Those who are disposed of need to be cut up to be incinerated or shredded. The disassembly of boats is in itself an energy and labor intensive process. Um, this shows the fantastic evolution of leisure boat sales since the beginning of mass production of GRP yachts in the 60s in France. Millions of boats have been produced in Europe. Sales have grown exponentially. Uh, GRP is great stuff, ultra durable, fairly lightweight and economical. Um, yachts have an average life expectancy of 40 years. The disposal challenge started around the year 2000, and it will grow in the same way as new boat sales have done, but with a 40-year shift. Europe's marinas are getting saturated, birthing spaces clogged up uh, by abandoned boats. The problem is becoming visible. This will take us to about if we extrapolate one million boats per year having to be disposed of in 2050. The single biggest obstacle to new boat sales is the gigantic oversupply of used boats. This requires a rethink, I think. We have to transform a line into a circle. We have to transform a linear process into a life cycle that design has anything to do with pollution is not immediately obvious. Um, pollution and waste are functions of design, though. Every boat is the result of significant planning and design. Just as we create, we are required to design an end to our creation's life. We try to assess our design's environmental impact with the context within the context of its entire life cycle and the systems it is part of. This toy is made from 13 different materials, all solidly merged together, some hazardous like lead or lithium. These components may never be recycled and will invariably end in a landfill. Boats are designed in a similar way. Many materials are solidly joined together inseparably. These materials will then disappear forever into landfills, non-recoverable to future generations. Today, the recyclability of a yacht is very low. Composites have a low or no recycling value. However, a large number of materials like lead from the keels, copper wiring, and aluminium from the mast could be recycled again without major quality loss. Were they designed to be disassembled in the first place? One man's trash is another man's treasure. Boats should be perceived as mines full of valuable resources. Today's yachts are built in a way that does not render it economically viable to efficiently dismantle the boat and recuperate its parts. If this sailing boat would have been built for disassembly, it would be possible to mine more than 65% of its weight. 
rethink has to take place at the source of the waste stream. Designers are creators. They specify the materials, conceive comfortable yachts with safe ergonomics, imagine boats that will appeal. They will create people's dreams. Designers have an impact. Designers and builders together can use several strategies to improve their yacht environmental performance. Life cycle analysis, design for durability, and design for disassembly. Um, durability is a sign of quality and beauty. Durability is a valid economical and probably the best environmental strategy. LCA, life cycle analysis, is a potentially powerful tool which can help manufacturers analyze their processes, improve their products, and enable consumers to make more informed choices. Looking at these three eggs, how would you know which is the ethical organic local and which is the CO2 hungry air freighted egg from Asia? Neither would I be able to tell you which of these sailing yachts has the most sustainable design. Neither do the customers, nor for that matter the builders at this time. This is where LCA could be helping to clarify, I think, and be a useful tool. Cars were made from many different materials bolted together by innumerable screws in old times. Various kinds of plastics, PU foams, foils, decorative strips, lacquered wood and chrome switches all adding up to the most complex consumer product, the car. When recycling became a problem, the threat of legislation helped manufacturers rethink and redesign. After extensive redesign and component reduction, recyclability was improved. Everything that is made must be unmade at some point. This is the genius of design for disassembly. It's effective because the environmental problems are placed in the hands of those most likely to have a solution, the designers themselves. Designing better is good, but it is still a far cry from designing with a positive impact. The positive impact boat of tomorrow might actually create positive energy, meaning it produces more energy than it consumes. It might clean the water rather than polluting it, and it might give nutrients back to the soil at the end of its useful life. So. Thank you.